In the past few weeks, there's been a major announcement about the shakeup of the Wauga regulations. So if you're interested in cask investment or you already own a cask of whiskey, you really need to be aware of these changes. So welcome back to the channel everyone, my name's Mark Littler, I'm a whiskey consultant, whiskey broker and whiskey market analyst and if you're interested in collecting and investing in rare whiskey, subscribe to this channel and head over to marklittler.com because we put out lots of information that's really useful to you. Now the repeal of Wauga is massive, this is huge news, there are loads of ramifications for this and this is what we're going to look at in this video, So, and it's specifically around cask investment but it also applies if you're interested in whiskey investment and you want to see just how dodgy is how some of these companies really are. So the first thing to know is what is Wauga? So Wauga is a registration scheme for revenue traders who want to own casks of whiskey. It's, it's pretty much limited to spirits, beer and tobacco products. And these are products that are all held in duty suspense in excise warehouses or commonly known as bonded warehouses up in Scotland and across of course around the country for the tobacco and beer and things. But it's important to note that there are things excluded from the Wauga scheme already. So you can't buy in trade in casks of whiskey if you're a business without a registration on the Wauga scheme. But you can buy in trade in wine and you can buy in trade in oils and fuels, which are also under duty suspense. And this is the real crux of the matter. Wauga has been the repeal of the Wauga you know, registration scheme is pretty much the work of one man, Alan Powell. He's head of the British Distillers Alliance and he's a long-time campaigner against Wauga. Because Wauga came in on the back of, well, it's technically the infamous uh, LCB fraud. And I'll put a link into the details below. It was, a, From what I can understand, it was a bit of a sting operation by HMRC. And then off the back of that, you had these, these Wauga registrations coming in. But then because the wine industry and the oil industry campaigned or petitioned against it, I understand, they weren't included in the scope of the Wauga registration, but whiskey and other things were. Now, the ruling that's coming out or what HMRC have said that they're going to do is repeal Wauga because one, it's a waste of time. And, and you know, like if you, if you need it for whiskey, then why don't you need it for wine? It doesn't serve any sort of purposes. So the whole Wauga scheme is being repealed if the news stories that have come out and what Alan Powell has been putting on his LinkedIn is to be believed, which I'm pretty certain it should be. Now, what are the implications of the repealing of Wauga? Now, there are some very good points. Now, first of all, it's gonna stop a heck of a lot of fraud. And let's call an apple an apple. If people, if a cask investment company tells you that you need a Wauga to hold casks of whiskey, they are committing fraud. Let's look at the Fraud Act 2006. Fraud by false representation, making a false representation, dishonesty, knowing that the representation was or might be untrue or misleading with the intent to make gain for himself or another. So basically, if these companies have told you that you need a Wauga to hold casks of whiskey, that is fraud. Under the Fraud Act 2006, that is fraud because that company they may say that they've got a Wauga, fantastic, which means that they're bound by the Wauga regulations. So it either means two things. One, they do not know the, the rules that they're being bound by, which means then why the hell have they got a Wauga in the first place? Or two, they're trying to mislead you to say that you need a Wauga in order to own casks. Now, if you look at excise notice 196, it says that private individuals do not need to be on the Wauga registration scheme it's only for revenue traders, AKA businesses. Now, of course, all of this is changing. The Wauga system is gonna disappear. So anybody can own casks of whiskey. The reason why these companies make these claims is because it's very difficult to get a private account at a bonded warehouse. So, which is true. It's a complete lie that you need a Wauga if you're a private individual to hold cask, but it's, it's, a com it's a complete truth to say that it's near impossible to get a private account at a bonded warehouse. Why? Because a lot of the bonded warehouses hate these cask investment companies that are exploiting you, the public, they're exploiting you to overpaying ca into casks and sort of misrepresenting the, you know, misrepresenting the industry. So the warehouses kind of take a stance of, let's protect our industry. Let's not offer anyone private accounts because we don't want to uh, allow these other companies to profit from the exploitation of our industry. 
So the good side of WAUG being repealed is that we're going to hopefully see all of this fraud removed because as soon as a company says, oh, you need a WAUG to own a cask of whiskey, then you don't actually have to understand the regulations. You can just go, but there's no such thing as WAUG anymore. What are you on about? So that's very good. There's another very good point too, is that you will be able to potentially, theoretically, own more than one cask of, or more than five casks of whiskey because that's been sort of like the rule that's been used around the industry or the understanding that warehouse, warehouse keepers have that a private individual, if they have one to five casks, that's fine for personal use. Any more than five, you're kind of being classed as a revenue trader, so you should probably seek registration with Wauga. Now that's going to go. So that means theoretically, if you wanted to own 20, 30 casks of whiskey as a private individual, and you could find a warehouse that would accommodate that for you, perfect. That's absolutely brilliant. Theoretically, you can do that now. Theoretically as well, any British company that wants to set up, like let's say that you're a limited company and you wanted to put some of your monies from your business into an investment scheme of casks, let's say that you might want to buy 50 or 100 casks. Now, once WAUG has been repealed, you will theoretically not need that WAUGA registration and you can buy those casks under your company name without WAUGA because as a business you would have been classed as a revenue trader. So there are clearly plenty of benefits, clearly getting rid of the, 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 the ability for these companies to commit fraud and for the abilities for more people to buy casks is very good. But there's also some really bad things about WAUGA disappearing because as unnecessary as WAUGA was, it did mean that companies who were selling casks and buying casks had to go through quite a rigorous application process with HMRC to get granted that license. So now that application process is going and that registration process is going, the onus is going to come down to the warehouse keeper to make those due diligence checks which means that the liability technically is going to fall on the warehouse keeper rather than on you know, HMRC through that WAUGA scheme. So I think we're going to see an even greater tightening up of accounts at bonded warehouses, even for trade customers. Because again, the warehouse keeper could theoretically get their whole license, you know, their, their whole operational license revoked because of the malpractice of some individuals. So now you might get more really dodgy. Well, they're not, it's not in, it's, it's not, they just are really dodgy. You might just get a really dodgy scheming, scamming company come up. They don't need WAUGA registration. They just buy a load of casks from someone because they managed to get an account and then they start exploiting the public. So we might see a rise of even more really dodgy cask investment companies coming through, which is really, really bad. So there we go, the repealing of WAUGA. It has its benefits and it has its negatives. I think overall, it, 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 I can't help but think it's going to lead to more problems in a way, potentially, because the real crux of the matter hasn't been addressed in terms of if you're buying a cask of whiskey, you need to own it at the warehouse level. Now, the repealing of the Wauga system means that you there's no literally nothing stopping you. No bullshit can come out from an investment company saying that you need a Wauga to say that you need a Wauga to own it. There's nothing stopping you. Once this has been repealed in early 2023, there will be nothing stopping you. But I think because of the way that the warehouses are going to up their sort of shutters, it's going to become even harder to get those trade accounts and private accounts. What do you think? Get in the comments below and let me know.